Um, there's, there's always been a little bit of confusion um, between temporal pooling and temporal memory. And we're talking now about a, a type of temporal pooling. Well, the output layer is a temporal pool. The output layer. And when you say the output layer, which layer are you talking about? In the cortex, that would yeah. be layer two and upper three, okay. or layer, part of layer five. Okay. Those are the two output layers in the cortex. Five would be output of motor? Uh, let's not go there at the moment. Just say there are, in, this is well, again, I have to distinguish, this is well understood in neuroscience. Okay. There are two layers that have cells that project out of this region to go either up the hierarchy or go someplace else. One of them actually generates motor behavior. Mm -hmm. um, but those are layer five and layer two or three. Okay. So it's just the output layer. And so one of the questions I know that people have is it, with this it's, this temp, uh, sensory motor inference or it, 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 performing some type of pooling, temporal yeah. pooling, how does it feed back into the sequence memory layer in uh, layer 3B that we our current implementations? We're, we're, we're not dealing with that right now, so I don't... But, but does it? I mean, uh, do we think it Yes, does? sure, it yeah. does, but I don't think we should speculate that right now, because we're not modeling that. Um, right. um, we are introducing, instead of asking that question, Matt, I'd ask a different question. Mm -hmm. um, feedback exists everywhere in the cortex. And so when we think people think of feedback, they say, oh, it's feedback in the hierarchy. True, that's there. Yeah. But in this case, we have feedback from the output layer to the input layer. I talked a little bit about that. Right. I've talked about this location input coming in. I didn't mention that there's a feedback from from layer four, the the input layer, back into the cells that are making the uh, providing the location information. Mm -hmm. um, that then remember I then talked about how how it goes back to the where pathway. Remember that we said it goes both ways. Yeah. The field, yeah. It comes in and it goes back. So pretty much everywhere in the cortex, you have you have bi-directional connections. The distinction is which ones are driving cells and which ones are biasing cells. You know, like, so like layer four projects to layer two, three, that's a pooling layer. It, it needs layer four is going to make the layer two, three cells fire. Mm -hmm. The layer two, three cells project back to layer four. They don't make those cells fire. They're, but they're biasing. They're, but they're biasing. They're depolarizing them. Would, would you say this is a biasing? Uh, yes, yes. This on its own, this location of it coming into the input layer does not make the cells fire on their own. Much like the distal connections and temporal memory are also supposed yes, providing no, bias. Yes, it's right. It's just depolarizing some cells. So the the, the the sensory input has to make the cells fire, right. but this input biases them to make their specific representation. Right. Um, so it, one of the interesting things about this theory is that there's a series of things that have to be resolved for this to work. Mm -hmm. uh, if I just reach my finger into a box and I'm about to touch something, I don't know where my finger is on the object and I don't know what object I'm touching. Right. All I'm gonna get is a feature. And somehow, through a combination of moving my finger around, I have to be able to determine what the object is, mm -hmm. and also um, uh, where I am. And these are, you can think of this as encoding like variables. I don't know the answer to these variables. So sure. the way the system's gonna work is you're gonna have a layers of cells representing these things, like what the object is, its orientation, and where I am on the object. And they're going to be forming unions of representations, and 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 they go forward and they go back, and the whole system has to resolve. The whole system has to figure out. Okay, after a few touches, I know what the object is. I know where I am in the object. I know the orientation of the object. I know yeah. what the object is relative to my body. Yeah. Um, so so there's a there's a flow, feed forward and feed back, where all these unions are being trying to resolve each other. They're trying to say, well, I know a, I know it's got to be one of these possibilities for location. So they have to inform each other. They have to inform each other, and and. and you get a sense when a, when a set of cells are, uh, when you form a set of, a union of representations in a, in a layer of cells, mm -hmm. um, it projects to another region and it forms a union of, in that language of that region or that layer of cells. And so all these guys, are, all these unions are trying to resolve each other, but there's always an intersection that makes sense. Sure. Right? Yeah. So. Because um, no one section has all the information. That was the end of the well, and until you until you resolve all the ambiguity, you don't have. That. And that's that in that output layer where yeah. we've got this coordinated effort. That's another type. Of, in some sense, that's another type of feedback. So, we are we are introducing uh, a lot more feedback in this model um, than we've had in the past, and it's in multiple places. Uh, in the classic example of oh, feedback down the hierarchy, we're still not modeling the hierarchy yet. Right. We're right. still not modeling two levels in the hierarchy. We still believe the right way of going about this is to understand what a single region is doing very well. Right. So now we know that the output of a single region is actually not just a feature. It's a three-dimensional feature, if you will. Yeah. Um, it can be a complete three-dimensional object. And um, that's a very different type of 
beast to deal with than, than if you just think it's some basic feature going up. Right. So we really want to nail what's going on in every region, in a, in a, a particular region. It seems region. like there's a lot more understanding of the world happening in one yes. region. It's, uh, this gets back to the old argument for a common protocol algorithm. Yeah. Why should I understand what the coffee cup is up four levels up in the hierarchy? Right. What's, going, what's special up there? It doesn't look like it's special. Right. So what we're saying is it's actually occurring everywhere. Yeah. Every region, it can learn entire objects in the world. Which explains a lot of the power of the brain. It does. It's, it's, what, it, it, what it flips it around, it says that we have far more parallel models of what's going on in the world than we imagine. Right. There it's are, not like there's these two or three top little models that represent Yeah, models. it's not like, oh, where's the coffee cup? It's out here. No, it's actually it's it's every, everywhere. It's every column and every region going up the hierarchy if it's, right. a, if it's a familiar object and right. I touch it a lot or I see it a lot. Um, and uh, so it's it's it really flips the right you're thinking about this, and and in the hindsight it makes sense. In hindsight, it's it's almost obvious to me. Yeah. Um, but it didn't feel that way when we when we came up with the idea. Um.